Here on Yorkshire, the Eve of Poll News from ITN at 10. Mrs Thatcher says if elected, she'll complete another term. Mr Kinnock says tomorrow will be the end of Thatcherism. Mr Steele welcomes floating voters aboard the Alliance ship. Iran is told to send two more of its diplomats home. In Korea, thousands demonstrate for a democratic system. Good evening. The election campaign is over. Polling booths open in nine hours' time. Mrs Thatcher's back at Downing Street tonight. The other party leaders are in their constituencies. Earlier today, the Prime Minister said that if she got back, she'd serve a full third term. She also said Britain would have to keep an independent nuclear deterrent to the end of the century. Mrs Thatcher said the government stood on its record. At Labour's rally tonight, Mr Kinnock said tomorrow would be the last day of Thatcherism. He said Labour had won the arguments. In his final campaign speech, Mr Steele said it was only the floating voters and waverers who now stood between Mrs Thatcher and a third term. He said they were welcome aboard the Alliance rescue ship. Weave reports on how all the main party leaders wound up their campaigns. Four weeks since he launched Labour's bid to become the next government, Neil Kinnock came back to Wales tonight to end the campaign as he'd begun it. Convinced that he has struck home now with Labour's issues of beating unemployment, rebuilding industry, the health service and education, and apparently sincere in the belief that Labour has the chance to win. Tomorrow, the 11th of June, 1987, is the last day of Thatcherism. What Labour had done to rebuild its party, he said, Labour could now do for Britain. When it is clear that we have won such cohesion, such determination, such skill, such appeal, such confidence in our arguments, such strength in this party in the last three and a half years, well, we can do that for our country of Britain as well. Nobody's going to push back the Labour Party now. All the obituary writers, all the pundits, all the experts that three and a half years ago had us dead and buried and finished are the people who are big enough, if they are big, to stand and applaud us now for the way we've come back to represent the people of this country and we'll go on doing that. Wales, he brought the faithful to their feet. 20 miles away from Cardiff, there was a welcome in the valley as he arrived for his final Eve of Poll meeting. Not since Nye Bevan came here to attack the Tories on Suez in 1956 have they seen a crowd like it. Their own man amongst them come back transformed by the campaign. Few deny the turnabout in Labour's fortunes wrought by it, a restoration of confidence and hope that many, even in the party, once doubted possible. Mr. Kinnock still on his feet speaking here tonight, apparently genuinely convinced that this campaign has given Labour the chance for power. John Snow, News of 10 on the Kinnock campaign in South Wales. Mrs. Thatcher's day began at a heliport. For the press, her campaign's been something of a mystery tour, for security reasons, rarely knowing where it would go next. Today it was to seats in the south where the Conservatives could be vulnerable to a late alliance surge. So in South End, Mrs. Thatcher appealed to the faithful not to waver. I hope and believe we shall win tomorrow. Yeah. But we never know until the last vote is counted. And your vote is vital, absolutely vital. No, we're never overconfident. We never assume victory, we work for it all the way. And Mrs. Thatcher kept working to the last minutes of a campaign typified by visits like this to a centre for the disabled. Also a typical farewell, the send-off from supporters interrupted by the occasional heckler. But above all, it's been a campaign of so-called photo opportunities. Stage settings like this in a flying boat chosen more for the image than for the issue. I hope so.
Tomorrow will determine whether it all has been enough to keep Mrs. Thatcher at the controls of government. For party chairman Norman Tebbit, the issues at stake tomorrow are clear. Is it to be conservative low inflation or rip-roaring inflation as it was under Labour last time? Is it to be conservative tax cuts or Labour's tax increases for all? Is it to be good industrial relations with us, or strikes and bullying and violence to suit the trades union bosses who have been paying for Mr Kinnock's campaign? Are we to see more home ownership or more tenants trapped, unable to buy? Are we to see better landlords for council tenants or council tenants left in the hands of left-wing councils who simply couldn't care less. From David Steele tonight, no talk of a hung parliament. Instead, the moderating influence the alliance could have on left and right and an appeal to those still undecided. And so on the very eve of the poll, we can see that the floating voters and the waverers are now all that stand between Mrs Thatcher and a third term in office. The Labour Party cannot win this election. The Tories must not win this election. And the floating voters are now struggling towards the Alliance rescue ship as the Labour boat founders. And to those who come from the shark-infested waters of the Tory party, we say, welcome aboard. Only our ship, set on a steady compass course, can save this country in the rough seas that lie ahead. So the Liberal Alliance battle bus, more than 10,000 miles on, nears the end of its journey. Behind it, a series of disappointing campaign polls. Now the hope and belief that opinion is finally turning. Michael McMillan, News at 10, Scotland. Uh, come on, come on, move, move, move. Having covered 11,000 miles of campaigning in the last three weeks, David Owen returned to his native Devon, calling in on an electronics factory, still hoping to win over the undecided, one in every three voters according to the Alliance. For once, the opinion polls a source of encouragement. Shows us winning Cheltenham doing extremely well in Cambridge, two seats that are very crucial, and here in Plymouth, a very good poll result with uh, not just my own constituency, but uh, the neighboring constituency poll showing us well within sight of victory. They've not squeezed us out. And now with us coming up through the middle, I think we're all in for a certain surprise on Friday morning. Tonight in Plymouth, a promise that the much predicted late surge of Alliance support is underway and a hung parliament still an achievable target. What we are seeing is an election like a patchwork quilt. There is gold patches, there are red patches, and there are even blue patches. But the important thing for us is that in going for gold, there's a good deal of gold there. And it's gold where we need it most. Paul Davis, News at 10 on the Alliance campaign. In interviews today, the main party leaders were optimistic about the outcome tomorrow. Mrs Thatcher said she hoped the Conservatives would have a good majority, and Mr Kinnock and Mr Steele said the evidence they had from key constituencies showed they would do well. Mr Kinnock said losing isn't on the agenda. All three leaders talked about their chances in the election tomorrow, with Mrs Thatcher claiming that with a more fragmented party system, large overall majorities are more difficult to achieve. So, she says, a reduced majority wouldn't necessarily mean wide dissatisfaction with her leadership, but is she certain of winning? I hope and believe we have a very good chance of winning. I never go further than that, as you know. I hope we get back with a good majority. I think that a good majority is needed, really, to hold overseas confidence, which matters, because there are quite a number of investment decisions which could help us in Britain. And, of course, we need confidence in Sterling, and we need the confidence of our allies in defence. But Mr Kinnock says he's going to win, because some of the published polls and all of Labour's own returns tell him so. In addition to that, though, if you look at what are now called the battleground seats, you'll see that we have made very substantial advances are in the lead in so many of them, and that will provide Labour with victory tomorrow in the general election. Are you going to predict the margin of victory? No, it's difficult in terms of the majority that we'll get, because movement, 100 votes in one seat or another, can make quite a difference. Half a percent 
in the overall vote can make quite a difference, but it will be a majority, tell you that. David Steele says the polls aren't telling the true story of what will be by-election style, seat-by-seat -seat alliance wins. The bandwagon is working in each of the individual constituencies, and that's what the polls cannot measure. I mean, we have been round the constituencies, we can see it on the ground, and we know from our own returns that this is so. It is, in fact, your parallel is, is exact, it's like the by-elections, and the experience of the by-elections is that it's only in the last couple of days that we get the lift. It's coming through, it doesn't register in the national polls, and we're not worried about that. Tonight, the Labour Party is very pleased. They think the campaign, which will certainly help to make Neil Kinnock's leadership even more secure, has gone well. But did the Tories catch them out on tax, for example? Uh, frankly, the Tories have been the most flattering of all because of the uh, vitriol of their attacks and because of the way in which they've tried to manufacture allegations against us. What they've been doing is to give a very reluctant form of very loud applause to the effective campaign that we've undertaken. Uh, tax is a case in point. They've had to invent allegations there. If you win and you're in Downing Street, you've said that you're going to do several things straight away, but what will be top of the agenda? Well, getting on with the job of starting to call the employers and the trade unions together to make the assessment about our economy and to see what we need to do in order very practically and very quickly to start getting unemployment down. That's the main thing. There are a lot of other uh, official requirements that go with it, but that's got to be the absolute top priority. Would that be ahead of recalling the Polaris fleet? Well, that'll go on as part of the process, obviously, uh, suiting the general requirement of uh, the Royal Navy. If you lose, would you feel that you had to put your leadership back to the party? Losing is not on the agenda. Well, nor is it on Mrs. Thatcher's, and there's no serious challenge to her leadership either. But there is much internal grumbling about the Conservative campaign. Should it have had more Labour-style slickness? We put more, yes, into policy. And had I been packaged in cellophane and tied up with ribbon, the media would have been the first to criticise me, saying that I was packaged like some detergent. Honesty in presentation, yes. That is quite different from slickness. And above all, I do not like a party which conceals quite a lot of what it wants to do. So I think on that basis we have fought the best campaign. May I say that the attacks upon me have not only been strident, but sometimes very cruel and sometimes totally false. I haven't squealed about them. No, I accept that you don't squeal when the attacks are made on you, but my point was that a lot of people, I think, were upset, perhaps would be the word, when they felt that in talking about the context of the health service, you were so very, very fierce in the tone in which you made those remarks about your right to private medicine. I'm sorry if they thought I was fierce. Uh, I did mean to defend, as I do defend, the right to choice. That, indeed, is what a free country is about. And the Alliance campaign? To the end, the two Davids have maintained that their dual leadership has worked well, that their middle ground policies have been the best. But has it all gone a bit over the voters' heads? I think if, if we really thought that, it would be demeaning our opinion of the electorate. Uh, we said at the beginning this was going to be a thoughtful election. I still believe that's the case. I think people are going to look underneath the glitter of the campaigns and they're going to look and see what is actually on offer and right at the end of the campaign we have been uh, pressing this line that you can have both the head and the heart and that's what the alliance stands for people know that the head demands that we maintain trade union legislation that we maintain a secure minimum deterrent uh, that we increase the police force uh, that we deal with the serious economic problems of the country the heart on the other hand demands that we do something about the jobless that we deal with the problems of education and the health service and pensions and frankly the, to have to choose between these two set of packages which is what the Tory and Labour parties represent is unacceptable to the more thinking voters and that I think is not something that comes through with a lot of glamour and a lot of glitz but I think it comes through when people uh, have got to go and put their cross on a piece of paper in the quiet of the polling booth. And those boos will produce the results tomorrow of a campaign in which no one issue has dominated since more than one, notably education, tax, unemployment and defence, have produced such sharp exchanges and so little movement in the national polls. 
In tonight's polls, Marplan and The Guardian show the Conservatives at 42%, that's down three points from Tuesday. Labour at 35%, up three, and the Alliance remain at 21%. 11% didn't know or wouldn't say. Morrie in The Times does a one-off poll showing the Tories at 44%, Labour at 32%, and the Alliance at 22%. 10% were undecided. In The Scotsman, Morrie put Labour ahead in Scotland at 48%, that's up four. The Conservatives at 22% down five, the Alliance at 15% down two, and the Scottish Nationals at 15% up three. 13% didn't know or wouldn't say. Sir Geoffrey Howe in Venice for the summit says Britain's order to Iran to send home two of its diplomats was a measured reaction to the expulsion of five British diplomats, a report in part two. Also, the Tamil women whose husbands had been rounded up in the big sweep and some of the funnier aspects of the election campaign, that's in a couple of minutes.